I'm Seth Andrews, and what you're about to hear is a true story. Evangelo loved music. He was four when he started banging away at the family piano. But strangely, he always wanted to turn the piano into something else, a new kind of instrument. Specifically, he'd go out to the garage and he'd grab a handful of nails and he would go drop them inside the piano. And he would listen as the strings caused the nails to rattle all around the thing. Then he'd go into the kitchen and he'd grab some pots and pans and he'd bring those over and open the piano and shove the pots and pans inside to listen to these strange metal reverberations and the pings and the clangs. He'd even take the family radio, and he wouldn't turn it to a specific station. He'd turn it to static, and he would throw it inside the piano, and then he would play and just see what sort of strange and unusual noises this might produce. He was an experimental musician from the very start. When he was six, Evangelo's parents who saw that they had a natural musician on their hands, decided they would enroll him in music school, specifically learning to play the piano. And at his piano lessons, Evangelo failed miserably. He could not relate all the bars and the clefts and the scales and the intervals printed on the sheet music. The teacher would put it in front of him and he would just be lost. What are these notes inside these bars with all these symbols? What do they do? What do they mean? He didn't know, and he didn't care. But he was a very clever little boy, and he had a really, really good memory. So he'd have his teacher play an example of the music first, and he would listen closely, and then afterward he would play that song back to the teacher from memory. Now, teachers aren't stupid, and his piano teacher was not fooled, but she had to at least admire this kid. I mean, it takes a lot of talent to be able to play like this by ear from memory. Born in Greece, Evangelo did enjoy Greek music, but as he got older into adolescence and his teenage years, of course, the edgier music became a part of his life, and he ended up playing in bands. He'd organize and play in bands, mostly just for fun. He was 18 when he finally got an instrument all his own, and it was a classic. It was the Hammond organ. And with that Hammond organ, Evangelo could tackle just about any genre he wanted, any style he wanted, any tempo he wanted. And with that Hammond organ, he and three of his buddies formed a rock band, and they called it the Forminks. They played mostly cover songs. They did have a few originals. The music itself, written by Evangelo, the lyrics were written by a radio disc jockey and a radio and record producer, a guy who would soon make his way into the movie business. His name was Nico Mastarakis. Nico was the guy who sort of opened up Greek radio to start playing international pop songs, popular music from all around the world, not just Greece. He really opened up the business. He was an influencer. And it was with Nico's influence and help that Evangelo and his buddies got some of their songs played on the radio. The Formings disbanded in 1966, and so Evangelo went solo. He started writing film music for these humble, low-budget movies in Greece. A few people knew his name. They recognized his sort of unique signature sounds. But most of the world had no idea who Evangelo was, and they didn't care. That was about to change. None other than the industry giant RCA Records stumbled across some of Evangelo's music, liked what they heard, and they decided to hire him. In fact, you can even hear Evangelo's work in the 1980 TV series Cosmos, hosted by Carl Sagan. That soundtrack was also experimental. If you listen closely, you'll hear that Evangelo actually incorporated the sounds of actual satellites from space. 
Even at the age of 37, if Angelo was still, metaphorically, cramming the pots and pans inside the piano. And it was that same year, 1980, he was hired to work on a humble, relatively low-budget movie. It was very lofty stuff. This particular movie, a historical sports drama based on a true story, the film's title drawn from a classic poem by William Blake. Now, this particular prestigious style of film normally relies on actual orchestras. But Evangelo, the experimental musician, decided no. For this movie, he would use a synthesizer, artificial strings, and experimental sounds. When that movie released in 1981, it would come to be shown in theaters and gain huge notoriety all around the world. It was nominated for seven Academy Awards. It won Best Picture, Best Screenplay, and yes, Best Original Music Score. And of course, that film was Chariots of Fire. Evangelo's music would be featured the very next year in the Ridley Scott sci-fi classic Blade Runner. You're undoubtedly already ahead of me here, but Evangelo, whose full name was Evangelo Odysseus Papadenasio, that little boy who clanged nails and pots and pans and staticky radios inside his family piano, the guy who never actually learned to read a note of sheet music, that composer who would go from obscurity to win an Academy Award and die a household name, he's best known for his stage name, Vangelis. And that is a true story. Stories Podcast.com.